hello welcome back to another vlog it's currently saturday i have spent the morning doing some laundry i just finished editing a video just trying to stay busy and be productive because i don't know the last couple of days i don't mean to like start this vlog off like as a total downer or like be negative or anything but i've just felt kind of emotional and a lot of things have been on my mind and I've been kind of sad and just lonely I guess and just now I started tearing up a little bit and I was like let me pull out the camera because a I know that will make me stop crying <laughs> and b I wanted to just share this and be vulnerable because I've been sharing this whole journey Moving away, if you're new here, I moved from Pennsylvania to North Carolina by myself. Um, I went through a breakup right before moving here. That's kind of what like prompted me to finally just like make this decision now after wanting to do it for so long. And I don't have any family or friends here. And the whole experience has been so amazing so far. And I've felt really good for the most part. And I'm so happy to be here. I love my new town, but I feel like I'd be doing a disservice and not being fully transparent if I didn't share these moments as well. Because yes, everything has been great. But I think I finally, it's actually today, whoops, what's today's date? Yeah, it's the 8th. Today is officially one full month since I moved in. So it makes sense. If you're wondering what that noise is, by the way, Benny's chewing on his bone. Anyway, ugh, it's not often that I cry or get emotional in general, but especially not on the internet, so. Oh, my mom's calling me. Okay, well, I'm gonna go talk to her and make something to eat and I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Good morning. This is a super flattering angle, I'm sure. I'm feeling a lot better today <laughs> compared to yesterday. I just feel like anytime you're making a big change in your life, like you're going to have a range of emotions, you know? Like it's going to be really exciting and you're gonna have a lot of positive feelings, but then there's also gonna be a little bit of negative that creeps in every now and then, and that's just part of being human. I'm sure that like the sadness and homesickness and all that is gonna come back again at some point, and you know, it'll, it'll all be in waves, but I mean, for the most part, everything has been very positive and the good feelings have definitely outweighed the negative but yeah i mean just know that i'm human and even though this is an exciting time in my life i still feel sad sometimes but i'm just getting ready really quick i'm kind of running behind a little bit <laughs> i'm actually meeting up with somebody that follows me on instagram she's a fellow hairstylist from North Carolina. I love that social media has allowed me to connect with people that I otherwise would have never known, you know? So yeah, I'm meeting up with her and her boyfriend for brunch. Okay, here is my outfit I just threw together real quick. I'm wearing these dad jeans from Abercrombie, little crop top from Urban Outfitters, and this cardigan, which is super, super old. And I can't remember the brand, but I doubt it's even available anymore anyway, because it's so old. Um, bag from Target and these shoes are from Aldo and I think for my perfume I'm going to eh, I think I'll do this one floral berries from Dossier. Dossier is sponsoring this portion of the vlog so thank you so much to them. I've been working with them for a little over a year now. I love them. I mean, as you can see, I have so many perfumes from them and I've purchased from them several times on my own with my own money when I'm not working with them. Just goes to show like how much I actually genuinely love this brand. They have replicas of tons of name brand designer fragrances for a fraction of the cost. The perfumes on Dossier start at $29, which is crazy when you're comparing it to perfumes that are like, hundred dollars plus they smell exactly the same they're just as high quality they last on me for a very very long time and I'm a big fragrance person I have to wear perfume every single time I leave the house even if I'm not leaving the house 
I like to spray it on myself because I just like to smell good and I like to change up my scent every now and then and just try something new but when you're buying the name brand it's so expensive and I'm not trying to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars just on my perfume. So I love that I can go on Dossier, get myself a variety of different scents without having to break the bank. And they also have a really great return policy. So honestly, I'll order perfumes on there that I've never even smelled in person before. And I know that if I end up not liking it or it just doesn't really smell good on me, I can return it for a full refund, no questions asked or exchange it for a different scent. So I will have a link and a discount code to Dossier in my description. Go ahead and check it out. If there's a certain perfume that you absolutely love, go and see if they have it on Dossier so you can get it for a cheaper price. The one that I am gonna be wearing today is Floral Berries. This one is inspired by a Jo Malone fragrance. This is one of the ones that I've never smelled in person before, so it was a little bit of a gamble, but oh my God, it smells so good it's like a little bit sweet and a little bit florally but like very fresh so thank you so much dossier for sponsoring this portion of the video now let's head out to brunch just got back from brunch it was so good we went to a place called brunches so now i just did a quick outfit change because i'm about to take benny to the park you excited Benny, you excited to go to the park? You gonna go play? So I'm gonna let him play in the dog park for a little while and then just walk around and enjoy the nice weather. It's been kind of cold here this past week, but today it's sunny and in the low 70s and it's so beautiful. So I wanna take advantage of that and literally just be outside the whole rest of the day. So change into some more comfy park appropriate clothes, pants from Adidas, Adidas sneakers, same crop top and denim jacket from Misguided. It's a few hours later, the park was great. The weather's so nice outside. And now I've been sitting here, jotting down some stuff in my notebook, journal, whatever you wanna call it. So one of the many things I learned from going to therapy is that I should really sit and jot down a list of what I'm looking for in a partner. Things that I know are absolute wants, like non-negotiables, like you must have these qualities. Things that are like, would be nice. You know, ideally I'd like these qualities, but if you don't have them, then that's fine too. Like it's not necessarily a deal breaker. And then things that are like absolute deal breakers. Like if you have these things, it's an absolute no. Like I cannot deal with that. And I just think that it's interesting like now being down here, living alone, being single. I feel like in the past, every time I've been single, like I've only been in two serious relationships before. And the first one I got into when I was still in high school. The second one I got into when I was still in beauty school and I was still living at home with my parents. You know, I like I wasn't financially supporting myself. I was still kind of like figuring out my life and my career and everything. And I just haven't been in a place where like I really am stable in my life and know what I want and like was ready for something serious, you know? I was just kind of looking to have fun basically and it just ended up turning into a relationship, but it wasn't necessarily something that I went into knowing like, oh my God, yes, this person is is right for me and I think that I will be with this person forever, you know? So anyway, I don't know. I, like this has just kind of been on my mind recently. I think I've been like just reflecting a lot on like where I'm at in life and past relationships and all of that. And I was like, you know, not that I am in a rush by any means to start dating or to get in another relationship, but I think it's really important to sit down and be clear headed because I think sometimes once you start talking to somebody, if you start getting feelings for them or you're like just really attracted to them or whatever, your judgment gets kind of clouded. So I'm like, you know, right now, fully, fully single, independent me, not interested in anyone. Let me sit and like get a non-biased list so that way i can always look back and reference my list 
and it can help keep me grounded because I feel like at least for myself personally in past experiences I and this honestly this happens with even with clients at the salon too it's not even just with like relationships I'll see red flags but I ignore them because I just want to give the person the benefit of the doubt and I want to try to be optimistic so I ignore those red flags but then my intuition ends up being right in the end anyway and then I'm like you know I I knew this all along from the beginning I should have just listened to my gut I'm not saying that you should only look for somebody that like checks all your boxes but I think it is really important to sit down and reflect and think like okay what things are really really important to me like what do I really need out of a potential partner and I think it's nice to have it written down so that if you are like really smitten by somebody you can go and look at your list look what you wrote down and then be like oh you know what there's some red flags here and there's a few deal breakers that I know realistically I'm not gonna want to have to put up with so some of my non-negotiables and they're pretty simple like I I don't think I'm being too picky here um, they need to be employed <laughs> they need to be driven and hardworking, easygoing, sense of humor, helps out with things like around the house. I don't want to feel like I'm being somebody's mom and that I have to be doing everything and taking care of them and all of that. You know, like I want to feel like I have a true partner and we can be 50-50 on things. Like I can do the stuff for them, they can do stuff for me, etc. I don't want it to feel like the whole relationship is just like one way, you know? They have to obviously be loyal, trustworthy, honest, make me feel loved and appreciated. They have to have good hygiene. They have to love animals. And we have to have sexual chemistry. And smart. I like, I like intelligence. And then my nice-to-haves, like the things that I would ideally like. Tall, like a tall man. Likes to travel, has a nice family that I really like and connect with doesn't have kids, has never been married, has good style, likes similar music and movies as me, is outgoing, and then my deal breakers absolutely like will not tolerate any unhealthy abusive behaviors. So if they like are very jealous, if they seem very controlling, if they're like constantly questioning everything that I do and who I'm with and whatever, like that's a no, absolute no. Uh, if they do drugs, if they smoke, if they have a short temper, if they're too serious and can't take a joke, if they're really insecure, no small dick energy here. So those are those are a few examples. That's not everything that's on my list, but those are just just to give you an idea. I don't know. I think it's fun. I like doing stuff like this. Whether you believe in manifestation or not, I do think that when you write something down, I don't know that I believe that like the universe will give it to you, but I do feel like it triggers something in your mind subconsciously that then you will do things that will help you get to that goal. So I do think that it's really effective to just keep like some kind of journal and just write things like that down every so often and I don't know, just like even just getting your thoughts down onto paper. I really want to enter my 30s feeling like the best version of myself and just feeling like the most confident, secure in who I am as a person, knowing what I want, standing firm in my decisions, and just being more decisive, like making a decision and then just sticking to that and not second guessing it. Being more intentional, I guess, to with my life and with who I allow into my life. So yeah, just wanted to share that. And hopefully that inspires you in some kind of way. Good morning. My hair looks crazy. Long time no see. I mean, you just saw me like half a second ago, but it's been a full week since I recorded the last clip you saw. My parents were here this past week visiting me, and you know, I was just trying to be in the moment with them. They just left this morning, and now I am ready to get back to it, get back to working, get my life together, but I'm trying to get ready kind of quickly because I have a nail appointment very soon and I still need to get dressed and I have to take Benny out for a quick walk before I go. And then after I get my nails done, I need to go 
get a new earring for my conch. Is that what this is called? Conch, orbital, whatever. This piercing right here because then he got all excited this morning when my parents were leaving and he jumped up on me and his nail got caught on this earring and it just completely stretched the hoop out and pulled it right out of my ear. Luckily it didn't like rip the skin or anything. I mean, it's a little bit sore. It hurt pretty bad in the moment. Um, but the earring is like all messed up now and there's usually like a little ball that hooks it closed and I cannot for the life of me find it. I have no idea where it went. So this is like barely hanging on for dear life. But it's just as well because I have been meaning to replace this because all my other jewelry is gold and this is still the same surgical steel that I got when I got this pierced years ago. I haven't changed it once since I got this pierced so it's kind of like forced me to do that. Here's the before of my nails. And here's the after. Oh, I'm obsessed. So beautiful. The name of this was After Your Beige from OPI. It's like a nice sheer cloudy white. And the shape that I get, I usually ask for something in between almond and oval. Now we're gonna go to the piercing shop and hopefully find something to replace this busted earring with. Currently in line for the drive-thru at Starbucks. This is a great angle, by the way. I went and I got my jewelry. I went to Seven, oh my God, what was it called? Studio Seven Piercing. The guy in there was super, super nice, very helpful. He measured my ear for me and everything to make sure that I was getting the right sized jewelry. I decided to just get another plain hoop, similar to what I had, but I got gold this time. And I did get real gold because I figure I don't want it to tarnish. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. I got a little nervous there for a second because it was kind of tight, but it's the perfect fit. A little bit pricey, but it's worth it to get good quality, especially a piercing like that. I never take it out. But this is what my earring looked like. Like, totally just bent and stretched out and fucked up. Hi, could I please do a grande brown sugar oat milk iced shake and espresso? Hi. It's a few hours later. I just got out of the shower. I'm getting ready for bed. And last week I had tried out the robe belt heatless curls. That was like super popular a couple years ago during quarantine. I ended up loving the way that it came out and I didn't have high expectations at all, which is why I didn't record it when I had first did it. But today I knew I needed to wash my hair. So I was like, let me do it again tonight and vlog it this time. So normally you wanna just let your hair air dry a good amount because you don't wanna do this on soaking wet hair because it's never gonna dry otherwise. So you want it to be mostly dry and just have like a little bit of moisture left. It's really late now and I am getting so exhausted and I just couldn't wait for it to air dry. So I just rough dried it a little bit with my blow dryer. So you just take the belt of your robe, take a piece of hair and twist it around the belt and then grab some more hair add them together and then twist that around and just keep doing that just keep 
grabbing some more hair. What I didn't do the first time was pay attention to how many pieces I grabbed and how many times I was wrapping and one side of my head was wrapped a little bit tighter than the other side and you could tell a difference in the curls. So I'm going to pay attention this time. So this is three, four, five, six. And then when you get to the end, just twist it around. I forgot to grab a rubber band. Be right back. I couldn't find any of my small hair ties, so I'm just gonna use scrunchies. Just something to tie this off so it doesn't slip out of your hair while you're sleeping. By the morning, my hair should be 100% dry. Then I'll take this out and I will show you the results. Honestly though, I have tried so many different heatless curl techniques. Some of them have like kind of worked out, but it usually would be hit or miss. And then most of the rest were just a total, total fail. This actually came out super cute and it was really comfortable to sleep because nothing is on the back of my head at all. It's like all up around my face and I do sleep on my side sometimes, but even still like this is just all so soft and it's not super bulky. I will show you in the morning how it looks. Look how nice that came out. I'm gonna go get dressed now so we can take Benny for a walk. Oh yeah, and Benny just threw up, so gotta clean that up. I just watched the first two episodes of How I Met Your Father. So cute. How I Met Your Mother is one of my favorite shows of all time so i was really excited when i saw that they were doing this and this is so good because it's like it's not a reboot they're not trying to like redo the show or bring old characters back and it's just cool because it's like you know a more modern take because it's taking place in 2022 and they're talking about dating apps and stuff i feel like it's a little bit more relatable to now because when how i met your mother came out i was in like high school and college and i loved the show but now I'm actually the same age as the characters in the new one, so it's like more relatable, you know? Anyway, now I am finally going to organize this closet. When my parents were here, they brought me some of the things that I had to leave behind when I originally moved here because it just didn't fit in the car. So I still had a couple of clothes and a lot of hangers. I like still have some clothes that are just sitting down there because I didn't have all my hangers to put everything away. So my closet has just been kind of a mess and this is the last area of the apartment that like I haven't been able to fully unpack or organize. So I finally want to do that now. I also have a shoe rack so I want to finally organize my shoes because they've just kind of been like laying around all over the place. I have a bunch of them in this laundry basket over here. Closet is finished. Put all of my clothes away. Oh, I feel so good. Here's the shoe rack. And then I had some extra shoes that didn't fit on there, so I just put them on the ground down there. Works for now. I'm currently washing my extra blanket. And that's gonna go up there. Air mattress is tucked back there. I'm obviously not gonna leave that there. I'm just waiting till I can put the blanket away. So let me show you like a little apartment update. I am going to do a full apartment tour once it's all finished. I'm just waiting on my couch and then like a few little final details. So this is the living room. Those plants are actually going to normally live out on the balcony, but it's been kind of cold these last few nights. So I don't want them to freeze and die, but my couch, supposedly I checked in with the furniture company 
They said that it's supposed to be coming this Saturday. I'm waiting for them to reach out to me to schedule an actual delivery time. So we will see, fingers crossed, that it actually comes this weekend. That would be amazing. So once that comes, I wanna get some artwork for this wall and I have some ideas in mind, but I'm waiting till the actual couch is here before I pull the trigger because I wanna make sure that it's gonna look good. I also ordered an area rug off of Wayfair. That's supposed to be coming later this week, so I'm excited about that. And I think it'll just like make the whole room feel a little bit cozier. I still need to organize the stuff that's on these shelves and not organize necessarily, but just like style them a little bit better. The kitchen is basically all done. I'm, I feel like I need something else right there, like another taller thing to kind of balance it out up there. I love this little arrangement in the center. I don't plan on keeping like all this stuff up here all the time, just this and the paper towels. And then I need to do this laundry. Bed is obviously not made, so it's a little messy, but I'm trying to decide if I want to just keep that as is or if I want to get something else, like maybe doing three frames or four frames or just getting like one big piece because I feel like that just looks a little bit small on the wall up there, but I'm not sure. This all basically looks the same as last time you saw it. And then the bathroom, not much has changed in here either. I love the real eucalyptus in the shower. I am thinking about putting something up here. I, it just feels like something needs to be there. But yeah, that is how the apartment is looking so far. I think in the next vlog, Hopefully my couch will come and we will style that bookshelf and um, do some of the final touches. I'll figure out the artwork for this wall. I was doing a lot of research this morning trying to see like what would be the most cost effective option because finding like big artwork is expensive and I don't want to do a gallery wall with like a whole bunch of little photos. I just want something like big that just fills that wall up nicely, but I need to wait for the rug and couch to come just to like make sure what I'm picking works well. So yeah, stay tuned for the next vlog to see all of that. I'm just gonna be doing laundry for the rest of the day and eventually editing this video. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check the description for the link and my discount code to Dossier. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.